Hey everybody, it is currently either very early or very late, depending on your point of view. And, uh, I don't know, I thought it'd be fun to revisit Hitman 2, the original Hitman 2. I haven't really played this game since completing the LP way back when, like seven or eight years ago, I think. But, uh, I don't know, it, it might be fun to revisit it and see just how much of this game I actually remember. Uh, I'm going to be playing on Professional, though, because, you know, why wouldn't I? But I don't really expect to be able to still Sonic Assassin the entire game. Uh, but, uh, I don't know, it, it might be fun, or at least mildly interesting. Uh, if nothing else, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And, and I'll see you after this cutscene. Yeah, so, I don't know if I ever really showed off the uh, little hub in the original LP, but uh, I suppose there will be time for that. Buongiorno, figlio mio. Come va? Padre, I'm okay, but I must speak with you. Taci, figlio mio. Be quiet, my son. We have a thing here in Sicily. Non saccio, non vede, non cero, e se c'era non mia. So, if you want to open your hearts, the only safe place is a confession in church. Meet me there, no? Yeah, so, uh... The sanctuary here is... I'm not sure if I ever really detailed anything about it during the LP, but it's actually a pretty nice place, and uh, I believe in Hitman Contracts and Blood Money they had a similar sort of uh, training area slash place you could uh, play around with the guns you've acquired, but none of them were in-universe. They were all like somehow within 47's Mindscape or something like that. Uh, I I really like the the sanctuary itself though. It's it's nice and peaceful, and you know you end up coming back to it a few times, and of course you know for the final mission, and you get to just play around with the with the guns and the pigs and the birds and all sorts of other stuff. But yeah, I'm not really sure. Oh, yeah, those bells signal it's time to go to the confession, but I guess we'll, uh, go see the father here. Padre, I have sinned. Avanti, figlio mio. Continue, my son. I have done some terrible things in my life. I... I have killed many people for money out of ignorance, out of evil, out of hatred. Figlio mio, I know you well. You are also a good person. I've seen you taking care of the garden. 
I know of the large amount of money you donated to the church. Your soul is on the right path. But Father, I do not belong. I'm not of this world. So why should God forgive me? Do not worry, my son. When your time comes, he will have a place for you as well. Just keep God in your heart. Now I must leave. Stay a while and pray. Lead me, O oh Heavenly Father, in the path of right. I walk alone and stumble in the dark. Show me the light and I'll go there. Let me find peace in my own heart and save me from my enemies. Benvenuti, ragazzi. Purtroppo la chiesa è chiusa. Vendite domani, per favore. Benvenuto, vecchio amico mio. Non è questo il momento di darci per appuntamento. Favore, aiutatemi, lasciatemi, lasciatemi, per favore. Lasciatemi. Oh, lasciatemi. Porca troia. Taci, stai giù, giù, giù. Eh? Oh no, intrigue. But of course, you know, if we've watched the LP, we already know who these guys are and what they're doing, but... This is the plot. Benvenuto in Sicilia, Bersano. We hope you enjoyed the famous Italian hospitality on our beautiful island. However, there will be a slight charge for your stay. You will prepare a cash transfer of $500,000. No later than midnight the day after tomorrow. Meanwhile, we'll be entertaining your host, Padre Vittorio. He very much enjoys fishing. We are making sure he is happy that way until payment has been effected. Lei sentirà de noi, Giuseppe Giuliano. Five hundred thousand dollars. Can't pay that. I'm going to the garden shed. Time to dig up the past. And just like that, 47 immediately wants to go back to murder. I guess his redemption arc didn't really last all that long, but you know, that is it is what it is. So why am I talking to you guys here? Well, I don't know. Honestly, I just I just thought it'd be fun. It it's a I don't know, it's it's actually it's actually not a bad looking game. Like, considering the time it came out, this this area still looks pretty good, but I guess we should just move along with the plot and Agency, this is 47. Patch me through to Diana. We need to confirm your ID registration, please. My number is BRO3886. Put Diana on, she'll recognize my voice. 47? This is Diana speaking. It's good to hear your voice again. We all thought you were dead. You'll be pleased to know your skills are in great demand these days. You're almost a legend amongst our customers. Diana, I'm not looking for work. I need some information on a Giuseppe Giuliano from Palermo in Sicily. What have you got? Let me see, Giuseppe. Oh yes, I've got a fat file. Giuseppe Giuliano, aka Don Aguilo Giuliano. Capo of one of the largest, oldest, and most influential Mafia organizations in Sicily. I need detailed satellite surveillance on his residence. And info on security and access routes. And keep an eye out for a priest. He's a friend of mine and was kidnapped. A friend? Have you gone soft, 47? Besides, we don't believe in handing over information for free. How do you think you're going to pay us back? I've heard that you're extremely wealthy. Yes, I know. I've heard that rumor too. It's not true though, but I'm sure you can suggest an arrangement. I'll pull a few strings and see what I can do. Actually, I do have a special request for you to perform a contract assignment. Should be a simple operation. A mission? Exactly. If you accept, 
I might be able to give you the requested information very soon. What do you say, 47? Still sharp enough to handle a job these days? It's been a while, 47, so let's just run through the basic routines together. Agency just wants to make sure you're not too rusty before your first mission. So I believe in the original LP I did a commentary free video just uh, detailing this initial story setup before getting into the first mission where we actually you know, had strategy and stuff to discuss, but, uh... Yeah. So, uh, it's good to get that context, I suppose, but we don't actually have to do any, uh, any of the tutorial stuff. I believe we could just go here and start the mission. 47, this is Diana from Agency. We're all happy you're back doing business for us. This mutual arrangement we made to rescue your friend and mentor, Father Vittorio, means you will have to take care of a number of Mafia members residing at the Villa Borghese, where he is kept hostage in the basement. Prime target is Don Giuliani. Security is not exactly lax. Plenty of guards roaming the mansion compound. However, don't expect to free Vittorio just like that. The Don is running a tight ship. And if alarmed, he will probably kill the hostage and escape. They're used to people coming to pay respect, ransoms or bribes, but they are alerted by unusual activities. Check out the map we have of the grounds. Buena Fortuna, 47. Actually, something I remembered uh, just watching this cutscene is that uh, the original footage I recorded going into the first mission here, I had to cut out exactly 47 frames to get it to start on the uh, to get to start where it did. Just that was a that was a neat little coincidence. I do remember that a guy comes out of this door fairly early on to uh, go pee, and he's our best way into this this little scenario. Yeah. Oh god, I forgot how slow 47 sneaking was. <sighs> but, whatever. Now, I also remember in the LP that, uh, I was an idiot and ended up dragging this guy straight up that mountain there so he wouldn't be seen when, in fact, you can just, uh, drop him right inside the door here because he's concealed by the garage and no one ever comes back to this area. But I also remember that you can't really run very far in front of enemies, because running is a crime that is punishable by instant death, if I remember correctly. Oh. Yeah, like, like, like exactly like I just said is, uh, I, I was demonstrating that and not at all. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna try that again, but, you know, I, I, I just want you all to know that, that, uh, that that was de that was demonstrative and and now we're, now we're playing for real. That was a practice run. All right. Uh, yeah. These controls are kind of weird. Yeah. So uh. I think uh, I don't like the Hitman games anymore. I I don't know. I I have no desire to play them. Really, 
I mean, really, the best thing I can say about this game here, Hitman 2, the, the original Hitman 2, is that it's still got one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard. But, uh, if, like, if I were going to do another LP of an IO Interactive game, it would definitely not be Hitman related. It would actually be, uh, Freedom Fighters, which I think is I would direct his actual best game. But, uh... Yeah, it's... Th th there's a reason after after contracts that I could never really summon up the enthusiasm to do a proper Blood Money LP or Absolution or anything else like that. And, uh... Honestly... I think Blood Money is pretty far down the list of my favorite Hitman games. I mean, I guess if I had to rank them, Codename 47, the first game, would be the absolute bottom of the list. That game is just hot garbage. But, uh... After that, it'd be a toss-up for me between this game, Silent Assassin, and Blood Money. Then it'd probably be... Then it would probably be, uh... Absolution, and then Contracts. Just... If I were, if I were to rank things, which I'm not really in the habit of doing. That... Actually, that is one thing about the, uh... The LP that I... Kind of, uh... Regret doing is that, like, I was so determined to show off the proper Silent Assassin routes that I don't really show off any of the actual level itself. Uh... Oh, where's my map? Okay. Oh god. Uh, how do I... How do, how do we... Alright, so I know there's a way to swap between the individual levels. Uh, how, how, how would I do that? I don't know. I should probably have... Uh, um, hmm... Well, I mean, there's definitely the map option. But I know that I can, you know, swap between individual levels somehow. I j I have no idea. Oh, okay, there we go. Second floor. Oh, he's in his office. Okay, and uh, now. Uh, my timing's probably terrible. I'm gonna get caught, but. Anyway, yeah, I, as I was saying, like, I was, I was so determined back then to show, to basically show off the proper Silent Assassin route that I never really showed off most of the game itself. Like, the levels were just an afterthought outside of the, outside of the immediate route itself. Which I guess was fine, but, uh... I don't know, it's, it's one of those things that I think I probably could have done a better job actually showing off. I remember you dropped down into this tree and there's car keys. That was like the first big laugh of the, of the actual LP. But, uh, yeah. Actually, this is, this is fine. Yeah. I didn't... I mean, I really should have practiced this beforehand, but... Honestly, you know what? I mean, outside of my practice run earlier, obviously, uh, this is this is going well. But I do remember a it was either a YouTube comment or a comment on the something awful thread that uh, you could actually go in the garage there. and There's a sniper rifle, and you could shoot the Don as he's swinging his. Uh, his golf club from from the balcony 
and he'll fall down, but I don't know if he actually falls down onto the lawn itself. Uh, because if he doesn't, then I don't know what that guy's hand is out for. Okay. Uh, yeah, if he doesn't fall down onto the lawn itself, then you would have to go up there anyway just to get the, uh, just to get the room key, and that's... That's just silly. Diana, he's not in the basement. They must have moved him. 47, this is Diana from Agency. You're probably right. Recent satellite footage suggests a priest being dragged along by four bearded Russian-looking types in uniform. Well... Oh. That's okay. Seems our, uh... Our victim woke up. Oh, shit. Time to make a hasty escape. Okay, um, I'm gonna say right now that should not have been a Sonic Assassin. That was actually really sloppy and uh, I didn't like it. But we are moving on, and that's the important part. Yeah. So the garden shed, I don't know if I ever. Oh, texture bug there. The garden shed uh, contains all of the weapons that you can get throughout the game. It's a pretty large variety of them, but. Uh, yeah. You're supposed to, in, in the final mission, you're supposed to, you know, get in here and grab your guns and shoot them, but that's actually very difficult to do on professional. So, uh, I just ended up, you know, fiber wiring one guy and taking his gun and just going from there. But, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that was a fine first mission. I didn't really hate it, except for that bit at the end. So, I guess we'll move on. Why not? Maybe I can get through, uh, all of Russia. 47, Diana here. Sorry that you've had so little luck at the mansion. It's really hard to tell where Vittorio was taken. We lost track of him in the airport. The agency does, however, feel that we fulfilled our end of the deal and expect you to comply with the terms by completing a minor assignment in St. Petersburg. Your objective is to take out an ex-KGB officer participating in a secret meeting, solely arranged so that you can take a clean shot at this officer. The meeting is taking place at 1300 hours today in the Pushkin building in Varozhnitsch Square. The room is on the second floor in the west wing, overlooking the square. The windows are marked on the attached image. The building is the former FSB headquarters and can only be accessed from the square. There's one main entrance and a back entrance, both heavily guarded by FSB paramilitary personnel. The target must be eliminated during the meeting, which is scheduled to last five minutes. Absolutely nobody in the meeting room except the target must be harmed. This is very important, 47. Upon arrival by Metro, you will find your equipment and paraphernalia in locker 137 at the station. Your escape route is returning with the train. Avoid all contacts with soldiers and guards. They are instructed to remove any civilians from the area. Well, that video was very helpful. All right. So, uh, what do we need for this mission? Nothing, really, I don't think. But, um, hmm. You know what? I'm going to take the anesthetic. 
And that's all we really need. Okay. St. Petersburg had seen its share of bullets and betrayal over the years. Not an easy place for a comeback. I suspect both guards and soldiers here are well trained and highly suspicious of foreigners. I have to rely on the element of surprise. They don't expect me. And if I keep it cool, clean, and quiet, they'll never know what hit them. Now, let's find locker number 137. Okay, so this particular level is, uh, well, yeah, these two civilians caused me all manner of pain when I was doing the LP. But yeah. Because they don't really follow any set patrol route or anything like that. And you have to get a sniper rifle past them. We don't, we don't actually want to pick up the sniper rifle just yet. Night vision, I don't think we really need that, but... Alright. Forty-seven. Officers are arriving at the building. Looks like the meeting is starting ahead of schedule. Be ready, 47. There's no way they just made it that easy for me. Are you... Oh, you have no... You have no idea just how much... How much inconvenience those... Those two civilians caused me when trying to plot out, plot out the LP, but... Here, when I'm barely trying, they of course, you know, get right out of my way, of course. Oh. There's a guy down here. Uh, yeah. I think if we go while he's heading back the other way, we should be okay. I remember, uh... Okay, so I, I absolutely do not remember my way through the sewers. Uh, I know there's a very specific ladder I have to go up, and, uh... Because there is a... uniform right next to that ladder. But hell if I know which ladder that was. So I guess, uh, you know, while I'm running around aimlessly, maybe I'll talk a little bit about, like, how all this started in the first place. Because uh, I... I got into LPs. Did I just find the fucking ladder in the first try? Yeah. God, I did. Okay. Yeah, so I first uh, learned about LPs, I want to say back in 2009? Maybe 2010. And I'm not... I don't remember exactly where I learned about them. I, I think I somehow uh, got linked to the LP archive at one point. And, uh... Ended up watching a whole lot of videos. I think the, I want to say the first LP I ever watched was uh, Psychedelic Eyeballs Prince of Persia LP. And, uh. 47, the meeting will begin in five minutes. And the, uh. And that led to, you know, me watching. 
the freelance astronauts who led to like slow beef and diabetes and all this other stuff and all this eventually led me to the something awful LP subforum itself. Uh, but this all really started for me back in, uh, was it 20, it was either 2011 or early 2012, where I had finally, uh, gotten a Something Awful account. The meeting will begin in four minutes. Get yeah. ready. I'm, I'm on it, Diana. Uh, I think it's this one. I hate that I remember all this. Okay. So... Remember, it's... Diana, it appears that a total of four generals have joined the meeting. I need extra information to pinpoint my target. That sounds strange, 47. And unexpected. Okay. So... Yeah, if we actually listen to the conversation, they would actually confirm that the guy I shot was the guy, but, you know, I I've got stuff to do, okay? So anyway, uh, I think this all really started with the uh, Super Meat Boy races. They, they were my first uh, introduction to not only learning how how to record and edit videos, but also the, but also, you know, just meeting people, which is something I still have trouble with today, but that's fine. Uh, but yeah, the Super Meat Boy races, well, I'm not sure when they exactly started. I remember the guy who started the thread, he wanted to, uh... Yeah, he, yeah. Because there was a guy who started the thread. And the races, and the, and that whole tournament. But at a certain point, he just kind of disappeared. And I don't know... I think I need to get through, get past that guy to get back to the... Anyway. Yeah, the, the initial guy who, who started the thread kind of disappeared, like, pretty early on into the actual racing tournament. And it was after that that Smite, who back then spelled his name uh, S-M-I-T-E, took over the thread and uh, not only finished the Meat Boy races, which I think I got knocked out of the actual tournament around Rapture, which I think was better than I thought I was going to do at the time, but that was fine, and it eventually, uh, but, but, but that uh, gave way to the, to the general Let's Race thread, which Smite also ran. And it was there that I think that I really kind of... Now, I'm going to ignore that guy because he can't go down ladders. But I don't think he should have seen me. Anyway, so... Yeah, it was with the initial Let's Race thread that I that I actually gained like some degree of I don't know notoriety or minor celebrity or whatever because apparently people like to see me be bad at video games and you know at the time I was fine with that you know I was in a much different place than I was that I am now of course you know it's been almost a decade since then but uh yeah my f uh, like honestly it became sort of a problem as well because I remember there were uh, there were several points where people like 
people were really into seeing me specifically for some reason, and I don't know why, but, you know, at first I was, I was flat, this isn't the right way at all. This is where I want to be. Yeah, but at first I was kind of flattered, and it was, it was kind of nice finally getting, you know, some recognition in my life. But, I, it, it, it became a problem because people were posting comments on other videos that I wasn't even in, I wasn't even a part of, and they were posting stuff like, oh man, I, I can't wait to see Chitlin race this game, and, and it's like, that's just, like, like, it wasn't my fault, but it felt kind of rude to the people who were actually racing and producing the videos to have comments basically saying, oh, this video would be great if someone else was in it, you know? And that, that honestly led to my uh, not taking part in a lot of, in a lot of races. I, I kind of toned down my general involvement in, in that whole scene after that. But it was also around that time that I started my own LP with Ragni initially. Uh, Blades of Time. Oh, this is... Yep, we are screwed. That was unfortunate, but, uh... Anyway. I, I think we can serpentine our way out of here. And not get killed. Okay, that was, that was a real smooth run right up until the end. Oh well. Uh, so anyway, yeah. I started my initial LP, Blades of Time, with Ragni. And that LP's bad. You, no one should really watch that. But back when I was initially considering doing LPs, I... Like, when I was thinking about what game I would want to show off... Hitman 2 was like the first one that came to mind because I hardly heard anyone talk about like the Hitman games before Blood Money. Like I feel like that was the game that really pushed the Hitman series into the public consciousness, but everyone kind of forgot about the first three games. And for decently good reason, for at least for the first two. But uh, yeah. About midway through uh, Blades of Time, I remember I brought on uh, Killer MC and Smite as well for co-commentary, and that was when I kind of got into group group LPs. But uh, anyway, I'm I'm gonna continue on with the game. <sighs> kind of annoyed that the guy was like right there. That could have been an easy silent assassin. That was like the one mission I was pretty sure I could silent assassin when I sat down to do this. But whatever. So I I always wanted to do Hitman 2. And when I decided to do it, it was It was a uh, it was definitely interesting cuz that was like the first LP I put actually quite a lot of effort into. Not not just, you know, with regards to the stuff I've already talked about previously, like, uh, actually, like, plotting out levels so they look good in a video, or whatever. So they have some actual flow to them, instead of just waiting around like a stealth game LP. Uh, but also, like, like, the actual thread I, I tried to do several, like, info posts and stuff, like, about the rating system and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, it was a, it was actually a semi-successful LP, and I think, I, I think it still mostly holds up. Uh, but I, at the same time, I don't know, I, 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 I have a hard time going back and watching that old stuff. Not that I've gotten, like, you know, amazingly better. I, I, it's just... It was a different point in my life, and I didn't... And 
I'm not that same kind of person anymore. Let's move on. 47, this is Agency. Diana speaking. We know you've already paid your debt to us by completing that last mission, but we would be extremely grateful if you should choose to continue your work for us, especially since our client is in trouble and he really likes your style. Diana, you know I don't care about your client. You want me to continue, you need to make me interested. I know. My superiors have given me full authority to pay you well above the going rate. Believe me, you won't have any worries there. So, what exactly is the going rate for an ordinary hit? Well, 100,000 US dollars is the current standard rate according to our price list. Good. Then you just triple that and deposit it in gold, prepaid into my usual overseas account. 47, I... you... that's quite a large sum of money. True. But I don't perform standard hits, and besides, I've got a reputation to protect. Here we go, 47. First of all, on behalf of all of us at Agency, thanks for continuing with us to clean up all this mess. You are required to return to St. Petersburg. It seems that your previous assassination really scared the remaining generals, they have all begun their own investigations into what happened. Our client is pretty unhappy about this. We need to stop these generals fast. We've received information that one of them, General Makarov, is to meet a local mafia boss to buy some protection and hopefully info on who could have carried out the hit. They have a preferred meeting point in Kirov Park. Nice, secluded and out in the open. We've got some old spy footage on them meeting previously for your reference. Our intelligence says they are scheduled to meet in Kirov Park at 1400 hours today, local time. Check your map. They will both be arriving in armored Zil 115 limos, but in separate motorcades. Watch out for roadblocks and patrolling guards. You will find your equipment down by the pier. 47, I repeat, intercept the meeting and eliminate both targets. a handsome looking man right there anyway so it's a few months after completing Hitman 2 that we moved on to Contracts and I think Contracts is actually a much better LP mostly because I had an idea of what I was actually doing then <laughs> Uh, for this, we don't really... I think we are going to be stuck in St. Petersburg for a while, so I think we do actually need the anesthetic. And, uh, I think that's all we really need from here. But anyway, Hitman Contracts, I think, holds up... Uh, the LP holds up better than Hitman 2. Uh, not to say, you know anything bad about the co-commentators, but I, in, in, in Hitman 2, I rotated through, like, a list of people by location, basically. So I would have one set of guests for Russia, one set of guests for Japan, and so on and so on. But I think that really hurt the commentary in the long run, because, you know, if I had the same group of commentators, you know, moving forward, that would... I, I think it would just would have made for a more coherent experience. And, uh... But yeah, I, I, I still think, uh... Contracts is not only my favorite Hitman game, it's, you know, one of my, uh... Probably one of the LPs that I like the most that I've done. Or this guy will shoo us away. But there's a box of goodies right here. Or, no, it's not even a box. Okay. Uh, yeah. Get our silence 9mm, but we really need the car bombs here. Alright, that's really all we need. 
Now, I remember this level is like 90% sewers. Sewer traversal, so... Because we can accomplish pretty much everything we need to do from the sewers. Uh, so anyway, yeah, after Hitman Contracts... I'm trying to think what I did after that. Because... Hmm. I think... I think while I was doing Hitman Contracts, I ended up doing... Uh, another LP for the Bad Games thread called Stolen. Which actually is probably my favorite game I've lp just because it's ridiculous and I love it. Uh... Is this the one? I don't think it is. Oh my god. I should not remember this stuff as well as I do. Oh, place the bomb there. Anyway. So I did Stolen, and then after that, I... I took another long break after Stolen, I remember that, and only came back after a little while with, a uh, when a buddy of mine, at the time, Future Friend, started, he started a, uh, 2007 thread, which was basically, hey, we're gonna, let's play games, like, it's 2007, we're not gonna care about quality or anything like that, so I'm like, fine, let's play Legend of Grimrock. <laughs> which was a terrible idea, but a funny LP. Uh, which way, which way? I have no idea. Uh... I think we need to go to this one. And yeah, I I I liked Grimrock. I I still think Grimrock is one of my favorite games ever. But uh man, I I don't like the sequel. It it just doesn't feel good like the first game did. I don't I don't even know how to explain it. That's why I'm not a that's why I'm not a game reviewer. I'm I have trouble articulating my feelings into actual uh statements. But at least Yeah. This is the one. Now we are going to need uh an aesthetic. So anyway, uh we did Grimrock 1, which was a good time, and I followed it up pretty much immediately with uh, Call of Cthulhu Dark Corners of the Earth, which is another one of my all-time favorite games, though for much different reasons than, <laughs> than I like uh, Grimrock. Uh, basically, most of the games I've LP'd are games that I personally love and want to, you know, and just wanted to play again, and, you know, why not play them in a way where I could also talk over and get that sweet, sweet internet attention for a little bit after posting a video. Oh, yeah, I remember the chauffeur comes around here and stops over there to pee, and we can steal his clothes and get the, get the car bomb planted. But it's just a matter of waiting for him. I either do dissolve here in the LP, or I just waited. Or maybe I sped up time. I'm not really sure. Uh, so, yeah. After Call of Cthulhu, I don't think I did anything for a while. And really, that's that's like my entire you know LP hobby in a nutshell. I I, I did a thing and then I stopped doing things for a while. <laughs> I guess I could pretty much just say that you know 
anytime I want to say anything. I've I've never I've never been consistent with my uploads. That's why I can never be a full time YouTuber. Also because I have a an actual job and I don't. I've never been in a position where I need to rely on this to you know pay my bills. Which I am, you know, very thankful for. I, I don't, I don't want the pressure of having to worry about audience retention and stuff like that, and you know whether or not the algorithm's going to like this video or what or that video or, you know, how much I'm making in ad revenue or anything like that. I, I enjoy being able to do my own thing, even if my thing, you know, most of the time. Is just you know maybe every few years I'll I'll end up doing something and then forgetting about it for a long time. Um yeah, cause let's see after Call of Cthulhu, what did I do? I have no idea. Did I do anything after Call of Cthulhu? Cause I know I did Full Spectrum Warrior at one point. That was years later. And, uh, yeah, no, because I did the suffering. When I, when I came back, I did the suffering, that was right. And, uh, yeah, I followed up the suffering with Full Spectrum Warrior. That's right. Now, Full Spectrum Warrior was, uh, the point where I really didn't give a shit anymore. <laughs> like, I just, uh... I had just kind of given up on being a good LP -er or, you know, doing anything other than making stuff that just made me laugh. Which I think is ultimately, you know, a better way to handle it. I have no idea where this looks out. But, I mean, I know when the targets leave, their their cars blow up, so I don't really have to do anything. I just need to find a way out and get back to my boat. Yeah, that's both targets dead. So yeah, once I uh, once I started doing full spectrum warrior, I had a great time with that. I mean, not not just. What the hell are the odds of that? Okay, so he was sitting in the car, the car the car blew up, he must have gotten launched straight up and then just fell down through the wreckage into Wow. Okay. That's definitely uh I wonder how often that happens. Anyway, uh so Full Spectrum Warrior I had a lot of fun with. Mostly because, like, I was kind of drunk for the back half of that. But, uh, yeah, it, it was a fun time. I, I enjoyed doing that. And, uh, then I, like, really wanted to just, like, not do any more LPs for a long time. But I didn't want to end it with Full Spectrum Warrior. I wanted it to end with Family Guy. <laughs> I don't know why. I just, uh, I thought it'd be really funny to LP a game that, at that point, uh, I think they had, like, three failed attempts at something awful, or, or, or on something awful, of the Family Guy game. And so I thought it'd be funny to, you know, end my quote-unquote career by finishing the un lp game. And, uh, I don't know, I... It, it wasn't that bad a game as a thing, like, like as as a shooter, it was not bad. But I mean, in terms of humor and story and character design and graphics, and uh, 
basically anything else you want out of a game. I mean, it was at least coded well, it never crashed on me. I, I can say that much. You can put that on the back of the box. But, uh... Yeah. So I did Family Guy, and that was initially supposed to be the for real end of it. But then I noticed, uh, almost a year, almost a year later, after, uh, after not uploading anything, I thought it'd be really funny to, you know, get the Full Spectrum Warrior crew back together for the two, uh, PC bonus missions, the epilogue missions, which I think were available on the Xbox version, but you had to download them through Xbox Live or whatever. Uh, that wasn't, uh, I, I don't know, I never had Live as a kid, so. 47. Diana here. Brilliant. Our client is most satisfied, but is still in a hurry to stop the last two generals before they get close to the truth. We've received information that one of the generals, General Mikhail Badachenko, is interrogating people in the basement of the military facilities just off Nevsky Prospect. The video was recorded by a security cam almost two days ago, so we have to hurry. Somewhere in the multi-level maze of corridors, you will find your target. Make sure the prisoner being interrogated escapes unscathed. Your equipment is in the supply yard near a crate marked FCK, just behind the main entrance. Security is beefed up because of rumors of an impending assassination attempt on the general. So, once you've completed your mission, there's only one way out. Blast your way through a wall out into the sewers and return to the subway. We've located the only place where the walls are thin enough. It's marked on your map. Keep it clean, 47. So, yeah, uh, anyway, so I did, did the, uh, two epilogue missions of Full Spectrum Warrior, had a great time doing those, and then I was just, okay, now, for real this time, I'm done. And that was true for a few years, I think, or a year or two, at least. But I started, uh, I basically, I was talking with, uh, Killer MC, and he said something that reminded me of Manhunt, and I just, I'm like, yeah, hey, I want to play Manhunt again, and for some reason I'm like, yeah, let's record it, sure, why not? So... That was basically that, and <laughs> I had the entire game recorded, Before doing anything, which which I think is the way to do it, instead of uh, you know having having to record on the fly and keep up with your own your own pace, you know just just have everything everything ready to go. But that did have the uh, downside of that. Had, had I actually intended it to be an LP like straight out of the gate, I would have you know fill with the brightness settings a little bit. Oh well. That, that I I used the default brightness that the game suggested. But I neglected to think about how that would actually look on video. So whatever. I can live with it. I'm okay with everything. Uh, this mission, uh, two-way torpedo, I remember being just incredibly long. Mostly because you have to walk everywhere. The, and actually walking everywhere was a... Yeah, that, that, that was a mechanic that 
didn't exist in the first game and was never picked up again after this one. So, like, every other game, as long as you're disguised, you can run in front of people and no one will really care. Hitman 2, they tried to make it, they tried to make it a little bit more you know, realistic, I guess, because obviously a guy who's running around would uh, draw a lot more attention to himself and look a, lot, look a bit more suspicious. But man, it really slowed down the pace of gameplay. So I, I, I can understand why they would, you know, ditch this particular... this particular uh, set of stealth mechanics. Although I guess it kinda made a comeback in Hitman Absolution with the instinct system. Because uh, on Hitman Absolution, you could... Uh, you could expend instinct to like blend in with your surroundings and you can't really run while doing that, so... But also, Hitman's implementation of the disguise system was just flawed in and of itself, so... I mean, I still like the game. I still like the game a lot, but... Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna pretend that Hitman Absolution is perfect in any way. <laughs> Oh, man. I'll be honest, I'm, uh, I'm actually getting a little fatigued at this point. Just, just doing this. Like, I've done, what's this, like, this is mission four I've done, and I'm already kind of tired. Because I, I think, is there one mission after this? In, in Russia? Yeah, yeah, there is. I've got to go through the, uh, the embassy mission. <sighs> okay. So I don't really, uh, I don't play video games much anymore. Uh, like, at all, really. And, I, and I, I, I really don't play new games at all, either. Like, I think the newest game I ever got into was... Darkest Dungeon or Grim Dawn, depending on which one quote-unquote released first. Because I like both of those games. But, uh... Yeah, I think... I think they both released back in, like, 2015 or something like that. But I guess they did have, like, expansions, so does that move the release date up? I don't know. I don't care. It, it doesn't matter. The point is that, uh... I don't know. Like, I... Like, video games are bad is, is, is the point I'm trying to make. And I don't think anyone's going to argue with me on that. Like, there's so much I could be doing instead of... Actually, like right now, no, there's really nothing I could be doing. I've got, a, uh, have got three hobbies, and only one of them involves video games, and none of them involve playing them. <laughs> so, uh... That's kind of... Kind of my thing, is... Yeah, this is... You need to pick this lock to get the officer's uniform, if I remember right. And if we don't shoot the, uh... If we don't shut down the surveillance cameras, then that one and that one will see us picking this lock. And our cover will be blown. But yeah, all does it change our hat. I think over here, almost. <laughs> Is 
this guy walk in this room? I think he does. Yeah. Crap. Because that's the wall we need to blow open, but... Don't want to be dropping bombs with this guy in the room. Alright. Yeah. Now... Mini-bomb. Okay. Yeah, so once we are out of the room, I think we can just... Uh... How do we... Hmm. Well, that's a problem, because I want to use the bomber mode. But how do we use the bomber mode? Ha! Huh. Well, that's unfortunate. I guess I'll have to figure that out at some point. I thought you just, you know, left clicked and it would. and it would trigger the remote, but is there another button to push? Hmm. Hmm. I, I agree. Hmm. Let me check the controls again. I know this is the most unprofessional thing, but. Uh. I tried F. Wait, did I need to... Did I need to, like... Uh. Yep, I'm an idiot. So, uh, turns out, before you drop the bomb, you have to arm it. And it turns out, I didn't do that. So, we are going to have to, uh... Have to deal with that. Could just kill this guy. I kinda want to. But, he's not gonna cause us any problems. He's fine. He's living his life. Okay. Pick up the mini bomb. Now we're going to need mini bomb. Okay, bomb's been armed. Now we drop it. Okay. That was the key piece of the puzzle we were missing. Now, we can just, as we are walking away, set off the bomb, get up, get everyone's attention. Yeah, that'll send everyone running to investigate that, but the important reason I do that now instead of later is because I just don't want a bunch of guards at my back when I'm escorting Agent Smith through here. Oh man, 
stuff is long. Hey, how's it going? So I'll be honest, uh, kind of surprised at how much I actually remember about this game. Because aside from some problems, I I think I've been, uh, aside from the few instances of... So, you have a piece of information I need. Unfortunate RNG. I've been doing, I've been doing fine. Such information is usually classified. And, and uh, okay, so remember, there's a pager. We drop that there. And we use the phone. Er, of course not, sir. But you see, it's like this. I, I see you want to fight. Well, we have other means then. I was so much hoping to avoid this. I remember the, uh... Yeah, this, this method's kind of finicky. Alright, so we're gonna do things a little bit differently then. So remember the, uh... You have to do it in a very specific way to get the, uh, pager. The phone and pager method to work. But there is another way. Alright, we, uh, yeah, you open the map. Speedrun strats. Yeah. That was fun. 47? Is, is that really you? I can't believe it's really you. Likewise. Thought I'd seen the last of you back in Romania. You were pretty messed up back then. Yeah, I know. I owe you big time. Let me know if I can help you with anything. You name it. Start by putting your pants on. Okay, okay. Hey, I know how we can get out of here really fast. I stole a key card from a drunk guard. Pretty clever, huh? Not bad. I could use this. All right. And it should just be a straight shot to getting Smith out of here. that cutscene because it uh it doesn't matter if you have the officer's uniform. Like they make it seem like you're gonna have to shoot your way out, but no. If you if you did this correctly, then you've still got the rank to escort this prisoner out of here. So I know once we get out of here, it's basically just a straight sh Oh my god. Those guards are so suspicious. Just leave me alone. See? See, that's why I try to do this early, so there's no one actually in there. But I guess, uh... Yes, everyone took their sweet time investigating. Oh, come on. Oh, I hate you. Just get out of my way. Atas! 
Oh, you son of a bitch. Okay. You know what? I'm not happy about this. Oh, fuck me. I didn't save at all. The game awarded me two bonus saves, and I actually thought, like, after killing the target, I should probably drop a save. But I thought, no, it's, it's a straight shot. It, there's, there's literally no chance of failure. Uh, well, I am, uh... uh I don't want to do all that again. You know what? I think that's where we're going to call it today. <laughs> Will I continue this? Um... If I ever get tired enough to think that this is a good idea again, maybe, maybe. I I can't say for sure if I'll ever, you know, beat this game again. I, oh, like, like this game's really long, if I remember correctly. There's like 20 missions, I think. But, uh, uh I mean, that's... Uh, that's appropriate to how something like this should end, I think, with just abject failure. Alright, well, uh, if I decide to post this, then you can watch it, and if you liked it, that's cool too. So, uh, we'll see you at some point, I'm sure. Bye.